I want uh, my television to uh, uh, people just kind of screen and look at some of these uh, Christmas decorations. I love this time because Jesus is the reason for the season. We love all the poinsettias, the different things that you see here, the little angels and things. I want to talk about that this morning. I want to minister because I really believe it is the greatest time on the earth. Not because I serve the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior, but it makes people aware that this religious leader, this person called Christ, is never ever tries to destroy or hurt. He came to give life and that more abundantly to the full till it overflows. He has all the power that anyone can have and yet because he's superior to it instead of driven by it, he protects your free will to minister to him. He ministers gloriously to you. You can, he, you can go to hell if you want or you can go to heaven. Now he prefers that you go to heaven because he created it for you. Hell is not for any human being whatsoever at all. It was made for Satan and his cohorts. Do you understand that? So if you'll turn with me to the book of Luke chapter two, Kathy talked a little bit about it here in this Christmas day, this Christmas time, this wonderful time uh, people are fellowshipping with each other and reaching out in a marvelous and glorious way. We're gonna deal with that this morning because it, it, it revives us and gets us into what this is all about. It's not just buying gifts. I wish people would rush to church Amen. as much as they do Amen. to rush the shop. Amen. I would like to see a few, even maybe if we had to separate a few people, they wanna swing at each other so they could get inside the church. That would be a trip, wouldn't it? Instead of running for an a, a, a electrical game. I wish people would come and spend all night long waiting until the church doors open. <laughs> that would be nice. I think that would make history. Wouldn't that make history? I think it would. Wouldn't that be something you see people in sleeping bags? What are y'all doing? Want to get the front seat. Yes, a few years ago in South Africa, I went, there were 10,000 people in the parking lots, sleeping and laying down, waiting till I could get there. Isn't that amazing? And I thought, will that hungriness ever come to America? I'll never forget that long as I ever live. But think about that for a minute. Could you, can you imagine people rushing to give their tithe and offering? Well, we lost a few right there. Did you notice that? They're just rushing, Lord Jesus. And that the news media would be out and say, what did you do today we gave to the Lord Jesus and for his work? Think about that. It can be if people realize what this story is about. Because you see, Christianity is a story. So once upon a time, in a far distant way planet, a person named God decided to reproduce himself in a human form called Christ, the anointed one and his anointing. Chose a girl to do it. A 15 year old virgin girl who had never known a man who was, had a wonderful name called Mary. And he appeared to her through a messenger called Gabriel and said, Mary, you have found favor with God. Isn't it wonderful that angels brings messages of favor to people? Behold, you will conceive and bring forth a son. You shall call him Emmanuel, God with us, God in us, God around us, God on us. I love that name, Emmanuel. He will be a blessing. He will bring tidings of great joy. This story, which is really time producing itself, an actual rendering of God himself. So many have prayed to God. Now they'll be able to touch him, reach out to him, eat with him physically. And you would think everyone would receive him. And yet they did not. Luke chapter two, Verse one, and it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered or taxed. Isn't it nice that the Lord decided to send Jesus right in the middle of a tax situation? Because taxes, most people don't like them. 
Think about that. Mm -hmm. This census took, first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in a swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Wonder why? Did someone give away the reservation? Why was Jesus born in a stable? Maybe the front desk lady lost the reservation. How many of you have been to a hotel and they, you couldn't get in? And I don't doubt Joseph wouldn't have made that kind of trip with a pregnant woman without making a reservation. Hmm. Now, verse 8, there was in the same country shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. How can anyone be afraid of the glory of God? Because man has preached religion instead of preached God. God is a father and his family. That's why angels all the time had to say, fear not, fear not. Fear not, because so many people were taught to be afraid of a savior, afraid of a father, when you ought to say, oh, my father, my heavenly father, my El Shaddai is here to speak with me. Isn't that amazing? But religion will make you afraid because it's man-made, but Jesus is God-made. What a story, because it truly is more than a story. Then the angel said in verse 10, do not be afraid before I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. Now, so many people are concerned about that December the 25th is not Christmas day, but it is a day. And it makes no difference actually what day Jesus was born as long as we celebrate a day and announce his birth. Quit trying to be so homiletical, hermeneutical, philosophical, theological. Enjoy the season. Mm, mm, mm. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward God. Men. What makes it a good will? Because it's a good story. You see, this Jesus, this birth, this God manifested in flesh. So the story belongs to those who write this down if you're taking uh, notes. This, this story belongs to those who hear it. How does faith come? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So this story belongs to you because you see, you hear it, you faith it. It must take faith to believe in this. Because see, faith is the only thing that can get you out of a situation that you, couldn't, that you can't get out yourself. Faith is the currency of heaven. If you use the currency of heaven, you'll get the currency of the earth. So this story belongs to those who hear it or who faith it. And then after they faith it, they believe it. So faith without works is dead. This story belongs to those who believe it. Because you see, faith and belief is now action coming forth. This Jesus is now on the earth. But it only belongs to those who faith it or to hear it. And then from that level, they go to those who believe it, which is action. And from the, those who hear it and believe it are those that tell it. Three different things. You must hear it. You must believe it. And you must tell it. People say, Brother Jesse, why do you talk about Jesus so much? Oh, why wouldn't I? What a subject could I exhaust this wonderful person called Christ? Mm -mm. So not only do I hear it, faith it. Not only do I believe it, action. I tell it. I tell it not even not during Christmas time. There's sometimes I sing a Christmas carol in June. Or sometime in July. Christmas in July. You ever heard of that? Glory to God. But to me, Christmas is every day in my life. Christmas, this anointed one and his anointing. How, how, how do you keep that going all year long? I heard it. I believe it. I tell it. That's why the story belongs to me. 
That's why God said, I will send forth one that Jesse can physically touch, physically talk to, physically have relationship and fellowship with. Isn't that wonderful? Now, when you see that and understand that, then you can understand how I can hear it, how I can believe it, and how I can tell it. Because every time I talk about Jesus, I, I'm talking about the Christmas story, the greatest story ever told. So it makes no difference. People say, what color was Jesus? He was black. He was red. He was brown. He was yellow. He was white. He was a gift wrapped in any color you want. Glory. Yeah. Glory. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. Yeah. Hallelujah. He was given to all men. So he was Japanese. He was Chinese. He was Korean. He was African-American. He was Russian. Hallelujah. Glory. He was Italian. Yes. Think about that. He was Portuguese. He was Spanish. Wow, he was Chile, from Chile. Amen. Think about that. He was everything you can conceive. This little bitty baby. So when black people come up to me and they say, I believe Jesus was black. I say, I agree with you. That stops the argument. When the Indian people come and say, I believe Jesus was a red man. I say, hey, I agree. When the Japanese and the Chinese and the Asian people say, we believe he was of Asian descent, I say, ha ha, I agree. When the white people come and say he could only be white because he had to have blue eyes, I agree. Why? Because you see, I'm agreeing with the story. Because in Jesus is everything you want him to be. That's why he's the reason for the season. Do you see that? Do you understand that? So the story belongs to those who hear it, who believe it, and who tell it. Tell someone today, even after the new year comes, tell them, let me tell you about Jesus. Oh, Christmas is past. Never passes with me. Because see, the past never sees the future. And if your Christmas is past, you'll never have a future. Think about that. See, because you see, immediately, even Scrooge realized what Christmas could become, Ebenezer. You don't want to have to have Jacob Marley come back and tell you to get your act together. And that's for those that understands Charles Dickens. You see, this message or this story is good news. It's amazing to me. When will Christianity preach it as good news? Because it is good news. Even the angel said, I bring you tidings of great joy. Oh, man. Why? People say, why are you so happy? Because I live in good news. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen our news uh, stories? They'll give us all bad, and at the very end, maybe a little good news. Well, you know, if we spoke about good news, we could turn bad news into good news. This message is good news. Why? Christianity, write it down, is not is not a mere reenactment of the moral law. See, people tried to make Christianity just moral law. It's more than that. Christianity is not a mere reenactment of the, of the moral law, but news of salvation, a soundness. Hey, you got a way to make it to heaven, but not while you're getting there, you can have a good time on the earth. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting right now. Do you see that? So it's more than a reenactment of a moral story or moral law, but news of salvation to those who have broken the law. So when I see or when I hear about the Christmas story, when I hear about Christ, a message, a good story, if I've committed a sin, he is faithful and just to forgive me of all my sin. Washes all my sin away. And if you truly understand this story, this magnificent story, you'll have a hard time sinning. Because your focus won't be on the world, it will be on Christ. Do you see that? And if you focus on your priorities, you eliminate all your confusion. And the greatest priority is the priority of Christ, the hope of glory. People that say, why are you not? A, why? Brother Jesse, I love you. I know you. Why? You've never been prejudiced. Why? Because it's not a good message. Amen. 
It's not good news. It's bondage. Amen. Think about that. It's bondage of such a degree that it destroys people's lives. I come to give you good news. See, why? Because I believe this story. I tell this story. I hear this story. So to me, it's not just a reenactment every year at Christmas time. It's every day of my life. Every day I get this word from God, behold, look, I have something for you today that will bring you tidings of great joy. And, that, that, and that's in the midst of great trouble. Because if you, if you have an end to a problem, you've got something to shout about. Mm, mm, mm. Watch this. Christianity, let me say it again, is not a mere reenactment of the moral law, but news of salvation to those who have broken the law. Notice this. It was so important that the messenger is an angel. The message is a birth. The recipients of this joy is all people. It's amazing to me how many people miss that part, that he would be given to all people. People. So why would we try to stop some people from receiving Christ? What's good about Christianity, no one makes you receive Jesus. You accept it because you find out what love really is. And there's something about a baby, isn't it? It don't even have to be your baby. A baby can bring joy in the midst of great sorrow. A baby's laughter a little laughter. Oh, a baby that a smile at you will take the hardest person and crack a smile on their face. I don't know why babies love me, but they do. <laughs> babies look at me, they see my hair. I think they think I'm God. Because <laughs> they see this white hair, they go. Yeah. And I just get, babies just look at me and go. And I never forget years and years ago, uh, not years and years, I guess about maybe three or four years ago, I went to Atlanta to preach for Bishop Keith Butler and his, his wonderful son, Keith Butler Jr., who was pastoring the church there in Atlanta. To make a long story short, Keith uh, Bishop had a grandbaby, you see. Now, you know how babies are. They, they hang around with certain people when they're born. They don't get out much. <laughs> Have you noticed that? That's why some people, they're a little leery of other people because they see mama, they see daddy, they see maybe the cousins and, and grandma and all that kind of stuff. They, already, they, all, know, they all know the grandparents because those are the ones they can get away with anything. So the parents just want to bring discipline. The grand, grandparents go, do what you want. It's payback time. <laughs> it's payback time. Drive your mama nuts. Go ahead. <laughs> she drove us nuts. Drive her nuts. Go ahead. <laughs> Give them candy so they don't sleep at night. <laughs> The grandfather's going, yes. <laughs> Payback time. Babies, watch this. So I go to preach at this wonderful church there in Atlanta. When I walk through the door, the grandbaby was in uh, Bishop Keith Butler Jr.'s uh, hands. You know? The baby looked at me and went, man, I went over there. Naturally, you're going to pick that baby up. I picked that baby and the, her, her mother said, she's never done that. I said, she's never saw me. <laughs> now, what did that baby see? Can you see it? What did that baby see? Not this. That baby saw the love of God and reacted immediately. There was no fear whatsoever. Now I had been praying most of the day flying in there. So the anointing was on me or the ointment like we call it was on me. When I walked in there, everyone said, hello, brother Jesse. The child recognized the calling, the commission and the anointing of God almighty. And I mean, just stayed with me. The parent, her mother was just, she just don't do that. I had to call up Bishop Butler. The grandpa said, See, she didn't know I was white. The baby never acknowledged I was white. I never acknowledged that she was black. That's love. You see what I'm saying? It was a wonderful time. It was reaction flowing between two people. I never saw her other than a picture. She'd never seen me ever.
But immediately, there was a bond. Well, when I was born again, I was a baby. Hallelujah. An announcement was made in the heavens that a baby had been born to God Almighty named Jesse Duplantis. And God heard it and God acted on it and God told it, I got a new baby. And when I was brought before the throne, I saw God did this. And immediately he took me and put me in his arms. Now, if that's not Christmas, I don't know what is. Do you see that? See, so it's not just a reenactment of a moral law. No, no. The messenger was an angel. The message was a birth. My God, hallelujah. Think about that. And the recipients are all people. So how can we hate someone because of the color of their skin or because they're ugly or because they're pretty or because they're fat or because they're rich or because they're poor. That has nothing to do with this. You are God's creation and you ought to be proud of that. Never let no one ever speak less of you. You are God's creation. So when people say, who do you think you are? Be bold and say, God's creation. God Almighty loves me. Don't you? Think about that. And you know, if the world gets like that, you might have some rich men coming to your house with gifts. Think about that. Now, for lack of a better term, wasn't three, it was a caravan, but let's just say three. Three wise men, better than three dumb men. Huh? Or if you're Italian, three wise guys, whatever you want to call it. Doesn't make any difference. In other words, they came bringing something. Why would they bring something? Because you see, you always give to love. Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.